Welcome to the Connecting Dots podcast. In this podcast, we try to connect dots that lead to aha moments. You know, like when a light turns on and suddenly you know what action you can take to resolve that thing that's been eating at you. I hope in today's episode, you will find some dots that you've been looking for. I'm Carol Webster. Welcome to the Connecting Dots podcast. This is that first episode where we try to explain what the podcast is all about. And I've invited Adrian to try to help figure out how to explain what the this podcast is about. Hi, Adrian. Hey. Really love Adrian and the discussions that we have on the regular. And we actually were on the phone the other day and I was, I was like, okay, what, how do I explain this? Help me figure out what to write. And it ended up being a kind of a long conversation. I said, I wish that we could just push record or have pushed record. Right. But we didn't. So we're going to try again in a recorded setting to explain what this podcast is about. Um, So I'm going to start Adrian with, that some of the verbiage that we were trying to like boil this down to a small uh, sound bite. How can we describe this? And then we're going to like explore that out to make it make sense. And listeners, um, if you are watching this and it's 2024, this is a work in progress. We're just getting started and would love some feedback. Like, you could probably make this a lot better than I could. So that's why I'm like, Adrian, help. Here we go. The the methodology or the the way we do the Connecting Dots podcast is it's to piece together ideas, conversations, and experiences to arrive at that aha moment when you have the right knowledge or the customized knowledge to move to your next mystery. Okay, that just sounds like a bunch of words. What? What in the world could that possibly mean? Wait, I think we have a different one. Let me try this one on, okay? Um, the Connecting Dots, Dots podcast is where we reach for the aha moments that lead to actionable solutions for your current ah, uh, to remove current obstacles. I think that's the one we settled on. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, that was kind of the more like I think uh, practical, less abstract. Yeah, a, a little yeah, more that straightforward. Like. More that straightforward. Was, yeah. Yeah. After we whittled it down. Okay, so what are we talking about here? <laughs> <laughs> we we've been talking about this idea of connect the dots for a little while, and I just think that it makes so much sense in my head. Like I can see the picture of like ah. Oh, the ideas, the people that I've talked to, the experiences that I've had, it's like I can kind of connect and piece them together so that certain things that maybe didn't make sense to me before, like now there's a little bit more light shed on it. It's like, oh, I understand this. So like, that's why I think we've kind of come to that, like the aha moment is being a big part of it. But like, again, the, the pictures in my head of how this connect the dots concept makes sense, but trying to translate that into a very succinct string of words is a bit of a challenge. Yes. <laughs> that's an understatement. <laughs> I don't and know. you and I love words. So we maybe that's are part of the challenge, of too. Yeah, that's kind of one of our favorite things is to say it in just the right way, but what's It has to be something that other people can understand. So I, okay, I have this picture, like, I think you just described it. In my life, I have, um, like, I feel like I'm wandering around sometimes looking for a solution to something, Uh, whether that be maybe um, one of my kids has a challenge and I don't know how to help them or maybe in my marriage or in my business or 
whatever it is. It might be um, a symptom in my body that I'm like, oh, why do I keep feeling that? And I'm trying to figure out what does that, what's the next step? But it's not as easy as just going, oh, I know what the next step is. Well, I mean, sometimes it is. But usually I have to think, now, what do I know? And I gather in that little piece of knowledge, there's one dot. And then I think, oh, yeah, I remember reading this somewhere years ago. And I pull in that little dot, but it still doesn't make sense yet. And then I maybe have a conversation. Say I, I'm talking to you, Adrian, and um, you say something like, oh, yeah, no, I think that might connect in there. And after I have enough of these dots, there comes this moment that feels like I think of a a street lamp and you know like in a cartoon where you have the it looks like a triangle of light coming down mm -hmm. and all yeah. of the dots are right there and it's like it illuminates the, the space in between and suddenly I'm like oh oh I know what my next thing is I know what to do next so that's kind of this connecting dots podcast is to pull in this dot of information, um, that question. I don't know. What do you think, Adrian? I love the street lamp analogy um, because I do think that there's a lot of things that kind of uh, swirl around in our minds and it does take connecting them together before there's that that light shed on it and then it's like oh the bigger picture makes sense i i get this um but the dots have to be connected and um that's why like i just i love the phrase because there's a lot swirling around in the head this is this is a side this side note carol um anybody's a fan of the more recent sherlock holmes with benedict cumberbatch he tries explaining to Watson how his mind is, I, I'm not gonna, I might, I might get a little wrong, but it's kind of like his mind is like a castle or a palace, mind palace. That might've been the term he used. And when he's solving stuff, like he goes in his mind palace and he starts like pulling different things from different rooms and then brings it together. Um, and, and then he's able to be, you know, Sherlock piece together that mystery mm. but um yeah like that's how I kind of see it too it's like when you when you pull together different bits of information or experience conversations in our mind and then it's like the connection makes sense and then the light the light like that street lamp goes off I love that analogy yeah so you, it's like being a detective Sherlock yes. Holmes. <laughs> okay, we also were talking about that word mystery. And we all have mysteries. Uh, sometimes when we have a question or something unresolved, we might get a little frustrated and maybe even throw up our hands and give up or whatever. But you, you had some kind of a quote. What were you saying about mystery and the importance of having mystery in our life yeah um so there was a book there was a yoga book that I was reading recently and if anybody's interested just comment and we'll share the title of it but it was kind of talking about um well the yoga path you know is seeking more light and more knowledge and oftentimes like we want all of it, like the search is so that we can have it all and feel that sense of empowerment. Like, oh yeah, I've answered all my questions and know it all. So it's that, that once and for all, I'm done. Yes, yes. I understand it all. Yeah. And yet um, the quote in this book was um, offering a different way of looking at it where actually the mystery is a part of the journey and it adds something to the journey. Um, I'm going to read, if you don't mind, Carol, could I read a few lines? I think that'd be from, awesome. From the Thank quote. You. Okay. It says, the answer is never the answer. What's really interesting is the mystery. If you seek the mystery instead of the answer, you'll always be seeking. I've never met anybody really find the answer um, they think they have. 
So they stopped thinking, but the job is to seek mystery, evoke mystery, plant a garden where strange plants grow and mysteries bloom. The need for mystery is greater than the need for an answer. Maybe it's just kind of where I was at that day when I read that. It's like, I loved that explanation of how like we can kind of flip the script on this idea of a mystery where we can like before I'd get frustrated. It's like, I don't have the answer to this. I don't like, I want the answer so badly to this, or I want to understand this about myself or about the situation I'm in, but flipping the script on that and looking at the mystery is more of like, that's, that's the gift is when something is a little mysterious, what it does is it propels us to seek. And it's in the seeking that like all these wonderful things happen um, within ourselves. So what I'm hearing and what I experience in my life is that mystery is when I feel alive. It's when I'm on that journey that I feel really like I'm in, involved in my life. So it's more important to be seeking, I think is what the quote says, than to think that you have the answer. I like what it said where like the answer is never really the answer. Yeah. that's that's clever <laughs> that's really clever uh it reminds me of something from holding space practice in module eight lanny peterson is the guest lecturer for that and she's a storyteller and uh, we were talking about story and um, i remember one of the things she mentioned was we always want clarity that's there is something so soothing about oh it's so clear now I know the answer and I think that that is good I love those moments of clarity but if we get to a place where we just kind of hunker down into that clarity and don't move to the next unclarity <laughs> the next murky <laughs> piece the next mystery then it we kind of get stuck um I think we might even call it pride like a feeling of, oh, I already know all the answers, so I'm I'm good, and I don't need to move on. But we've got to keep growing, or we don't, we're not alive. Just like a plant, if it's not growing, it's not alive. If we're not growing, we're not alive. Even if our body is alive, if we aren't doing something to grow in some way, you begin to die. Another um, concept that we bring up in holding space practice, and you have to Remind me of the module, the curiosity. Is it six? Uh -huh. <laughs> module six. No, I think that one might be one, two, three, four, five. Five. I think it's okay. five. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> it's right there in the middle. Um, yeah. Yeah, that concept of curiosity, which I think there's been a lot more conversations about how important it is to approach growth from this place of curiosity um, because it helps remove the judgment. Um, but I think about that too, when there's a mystery, like when we kind of think of the question or the situation, it's more like this mystery, we can, I think, engage in that place of being curious about it a lot easier. Um, and like the other word that comes to my mind, and I know this may not be the case in all situations, but like playfulness, like when you're curious about something, you can kind of think of it as like, oh, this is interesting. And kind yes. of be more like a child and be like, oh, this is different. This is interesting. I want to learn. Why does it, why does this happen when I do this? Mm -hmm. And I think that really helps us remove the judgment, this, especially the self-judgment out of the learning process and just engage in a way that's more playful, more experimenting and thinking in it like as a child, um, being in a new setting, a new environment, and just being really curious, like, oh, if I press this, what happens? Um, I have a, a baby right now who is almost one years old. He's a few months shy of that. And he's at the crawling stage. Um, and he's very much in that place of, if I touch this, if I pick up this, like, and I see the light go off in his eyes, it's like, ooh, what those aha <laughs> moments when you're so little. Oh, I get it. I, or that stage where <laughs> they're sitting in a high chair or something and they drop it. They drop whatever yeah. it is. And it's like they keep dropping things over and over <laughs> and over again. Like they're testing to see if gravity works or they're testing to see if mom or brother or whatever is going to go pick it up yeah. every time. 
Yeah, we're, so, we're at that stage. Right. <laughs> it's fun. So in this podcast, this Connecting Dots podcast, I think we have the idea of, all right, we're going to explore dots of information and try to connect. But why would anybody want to listen to this? What are some of the topics that we anticipate exploring? Um, I sat down and wrote a list of what am I passionate about? What do I love to talk about? Um, Adrian, I know that we have similar passions. Can you throw out some ideas of what, what do we talk about when we, okay, I'm going to back up. <laughs> this whole thing came because of so many conversations where we're on the phone and we're like, this is so good. We should just record this. And people would, would be able to have aha moments with us. Uh, it was, oh my goodness, at least three years ago, maybe more, that our friend Ashley, she was really listening to podcasts. And the truth was, I, I, I didn't get it. I just wasn't listening to podcasts very much yet. And she's like, Carol, you need to do a podcast. Do a podcast. Do a podcast. She kept saying this. I'm like, okay, I will. I will. Someday I will. And I'm, I'm excited that to, it finally arrived. And it's because I started listening regularly to a few podcasters and it made a difference in my life. It, it allowed me to, it, it fed me while I was doing other things. I could be fed in, you know, in my mind, in my heart. And I so appreciated those that take the time to do that. So this is really a gift to be able to explore anything. So I, one answer is, Anybody that's listening, you could say, hey, can we talk about this thing? So it could be open-ended that way. Okay, so Adrian, what are some of the things we naturally talk about, though? What are some of our phone calls? You know, I was thinking about that earlier, and there's kind of like a pattern. Uh, like, we'll start by giving updates on our families. It's like, oh, you know, this is what they're doing. This is what's going on. And then it kind of just naturally segues into like the the question that's been on our mind in regards to that situation or that relationship and then from there you know that's when we start pulling in dots but um you know a topic that i love um talking about is in regards to um health and thinking about um i guess you could say more natural ways to approach health that'd probably be a good way to talk about it, but I, I really like to think of like, you know, we have this amazing body, our mind and our body is this really amazing instrument. And like, I love learning about ways that we're already de de designed to, um, I guess, operate at more of an optimum place just based on how our mind and our body is designed. And so, you know, I'll throw out the term Ayurveda, some of you yeah. may have heard it. Some of you may not. Um, but it's a it's a sister science of yoga. And it's something that um, I, I've been passionate about for several years. And so has Carol. And so a lot of times when we have conversations regarding health, um, we'll kind of weave in and out of some of the, the Ayurveda knowledge. And again, like piecing together new stuff that we've learned either ex through experience or through other information other people have shared. Um, and I just, um, I love that topic because I think that there, there is always room for growth and improvement and we don't have to feel like, oh, I'm not there yet, but just more be like, okay, this is where I'm at and I'm refining. Like I, I'm learning new things about myself and as I discover new information, it's like I'm able to just refine my health and also um, the way that I can help take care of my family and others. So, yeah, I just I feel like there's kind of this something natural in us that we want to we want to grow. We want to do things um, a little bit more enlightened, more better. And um, more yeah, more what? <laughs> more better. More better. I know more that's not really a correct phrase, but more <laughs> better. And I, I mean, I, I love you know the topic of of health, 
um, because I think that um, it's important for us, you know, to get to a place where we do feel balanced and we have that sense of wholeness um, and continue to refine, continue to kind of discover those pearls of wisdom that come our way to help us refine um, our health, which all leads to a place, um, which maybe we'll get to this in our conversation. But um, for me, it really is that spiritual element in my life where I feel connected to something bigger than myself, which I call God. Um, and I connect to a bigger meaning and purpose for my life. Um, so yeah, the, the health journey takes me to that place. <laughs> yeah, it's really hard to do much of anything if we're in pain. Um, so when we can release ourselves from pain and suffering, it allows us to grow. Uh, I don't know, it's just hard to think if you're feeling sick or tired or whatever. So we do. We talk a lot about that. I think we talk a lot about relationships, um, particularly like parenting is a big one that we talk about a lot. Like, what? <laughs> um, we also talk about our marriages and we want them to be good. Um, all of these things have something in common. We always talk about what is the pattern. If we can discover a pattern, um, then we can maybe figure out the cause and effect. And we, we always know that we can't make anyone else change. Like that's, everybody has to choose the way they want to be, think, and so forth. But we can adjust ourselves. And when we do that, it helps others to also maybe um, look at life in a different way. So we're always exploring different people's lenses and how they might see things so that we can feel more compassion about the other side of the story. I think we dis we discuss a lot. Okay, so what's the other side of the coin? You know, I'm seeing it this way. What's another way to see it? And then it's like, okay, there are our dots, right? And then how many times it's like, oh, okay, yeah, I know what to do next. I get it. Aha. So I love that that moment and sometimes it takes us a while to get there but usually we do <laughs> in some degree or another in our conversations yeah so besides like let's say problem solving or detective work there's this other piece that I'm really excited to add to the connecting dots podcast it's been I probably at least 10 years ago, I started a homeschool co-op and created a, a beautiful community with these women. And one of the things that we did to help ourselves to grow was, of course, to study. And then we would have a celebration once a year. I, I like celebrating in January. And we would have this annual celebration. We called it the learning journey celebration. And as part of that, we would think about who are our mentors? Who has helped me to learn? And we would then write a memorial, not a memorial because they're usually not dead, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> something to honor our mentors. We would choose one person and then we would write about that mentor. And we called it the, they are an honored mentor and they would get some kind of a moment, memento. Sometimes they would attend the celebration. Sometimes they were far away and it would be sent to them. And I want to pick that up again. I, we haven't done this in a number of years. And I want to have this podcast a place where people can honor their teachers and their mentors. And, um, you know, maybe the only person that will listen to that podcast is the person that's being honored. I don't care. It's really, it's really a neat opportunity to be able to say, hey, I really think a lot about you and you have made a difference in my life. So maybe be thinking about who is the person or who are the people in your life? If you were to honor someone, one person this year, who would that one person be? 
a lot of people chose their mother, their father, spouse, um, others. Well, it was different from year to year. And because we did it repeatedly, we had to get more and more, we got further and further away from our main circle. So I'm excited about that part of the podcast. Any other follow-up thoughts, Adrian? Anything else we talked about to describe what this podcast is to be about? You know, the other pieces that I think about, um, uh, it is the cultural piece. So, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I mean, all of us, we have diverse backgrounds. And so we bring different experience and exposure to things, you know, into a conversation. And um, even though there's a lot of similarities between Carol and I, obviously, there's a lot of differences, too. And some of that is cultural. And, um, you know, it's interesting sharing knowledge and like lessons learned from that cultural perspective. And um, that's a part of the dots as well, is being able to see something from a culture that is very different from your own. Um, And also like a culture that maybe you're very much a part of just trying to understand it better and connect the dots with other other cultures that there's similarity, but actually when you look at the other culture, it's like, oh, I understand this aspect of mine so much better. Um, and I'm sure we'll delve into that more specifically. I'm talking a bit in abstracts, but future podcast episodes, I'm sure we'll delve into that more specifically. Um, but I also think too, like Carol, um, I'll bring this up, like, you know, I know you host international students you have for a long time. And it's always interesting just hearing the things that you have to share that they bring from their cultures. Um, and I know that's a big part of um, your passion of, of what you do. And it, it's a, uh, what's the, what's the phrase? It's a, well, it's a work of love. <laughs> I know you do. I mean, it is, but it's mutual, really. We gain a lot by interacting with people from different places. I, I wrote, so I wrote a list. I'm going to read this list, but I'm going to re- read, what did I write about the culture piece? Um, this is what I wrote. Extracting what is universal and not in cultures across the globe and across the street. So you don't have to go very far to find a different culture. My next door neighbor in their home has a different culture than the culture in my home. So that's important because we don't always know what water we're swimming in. Like a fish is swimming in water. And if you said, hey, fish, you're in the water. And they're like, what are you talking about? Because they don't know any other way. It's water. That, what do you mean air? I don't know what air is. But you take that fish out of the water and into a different culture, a different environment, they suddenly start to gasp because it's not their culture. And then they go back into the water and they understand, oh, oh, that's my water. That's my culture. So it's not just, uh, oh, isn't that cool that we all have differences? It's really about learning about ourselves by exploring what we're not and why we're not that. All right, let me look at this um, this list one more time. I'm going to read, um, I love talking about creating the ideal learning environment. Like how does the brain work and how do we learn the best? And why do different people learn in different ways? I, that's fascinating to me. I love talking about how to build a harmonious family relationship or work relationships. I love talking about what What are the things that you would do to create harmony? Um, What blocks us from being the best version of ourselves and how do we unblock that? So again, it goes back to that. I don't even know what's blocking me. And when I can see, oh man, there is something bothering me. That's a block. And then the question is, how can I remove that? These are usually unconscious thoughts um kind of programs in our mind that are there that we don't realize are there and we can get rid of those not even get rid of them we can explore them and then decide what is true what is not true for me 
and that can have changed over time. So love talking about that. Um, I love talking about love and charity and the idea of unconditional love and how that's really a misnomer. We really don't have unconditional love until we go through lots and lots of steps of conditional love. That's really important. So anyway, one of my favorite topics, I love talking about human development. And there's a lot out there like about children development, like, you know, from zero to six months, there are certain things that happen and so forth. But we usually stop talking about that at about age 25. We're like, okay, a human being's um, prefrontal cortex is now able to be completely finished at age 25. But oh my goodness, so much has happened since 25. Something's going on between 25 and death at if you live to be 100. And I am noticing the patterns of those different decades. And I like talking about um, the different decades and how our mind shifts and changes in those decades. So those are a few of the topics. Uh, I hope that listeners will um, send in comments or even email me, carol at holdingspacepractice.com and say, hey, can we talk about this? Or we'll have different guests on and talk about their passions. So with that, Adrian, any follow-up thoughts? Um, we'll be wrapping this up. I'm just excited um, because I was also one to kind of prod Carol a little bit, be like, hey, what about doing a podcast? You have so much to share, you know, verbally um, and being able to host others. Um, so I'm just really glad to see that, um, you know, we're, we're uh, taking a first step towards that with today's podcast and get the momentum going. And yeah, I'm excited to see, you know, the, um, the engagement from others um, and more dots that we can keep connecting things with. Yeah. The more people that we start interacting with the more opportunity we have to learn more so with this platform of a podcast that could be that could be pretty big it's, it's easy to turn on the podcast so here's hoping that you will decide you want to tune in to many more podcasts we'll see you next time for more resources visit carolbwebster.com